The Voyager mission is one of the longest space missions maintained by NASA, and in the 40 plus years, the two spacecrafts have been hurtling through deep space. They have performed flybys of several planets, sending back astonishing pictures and information. These Voyagers have been to expand our knowledge of the universe. Stay tuned to find out the final images sent from space. History of the Voyager 2 Voyager 2 is a space probe launched by NASA on August 20th, 1977, to study the outer planets in interstellar space beyond the Sun's heliosphere, a part of the Voyager program. It was launched 16 days before its twin, Voyager 1, on a trajectory that took longer to reach gas giants Jupiter and Saturn, but enabled further encounters with ice giants Uranus and Neptune. It remains the only spacecraft to have visited a combination of either of the gas giants and both ice giant planets. Voyager 2 is the fourth of five spacecraft to achieve the solar escape velocity, which allowed it to leave the solar system. Voyager 1 and 2 were designed to take advantage of a rare planetary alignment to study the outer solar system up close. Voyager 2 targeted Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Like its sister spacecraft, Voyager 2 was also designed to find and study the edge of our solar system. Voyager 2 successfully fulfilled its primary mission of visiting the Jovian system in 1979, the Saturnian system in 1981, the Uranian system in 1986, and the Neptunian system in 1989. The spacecraft now is in its extended mission of studying interstellar space. It has been operating for 44 years, 6 months, and 26 days as of March 19, 2022. And as of February 9, 2022, it has reached a distance of 130.1 AU, 19.463 billion kilometers, 12.094 billion miles from Earth. The probe reached interstellar space on November 5, 2018, at a distance of 122 AU, 11.3 billion miles, 18.3 billion kilometers, about 1658 light hours from the Sun, and moving at a velocity of 15.351 kilometers per second, 35,320 miles per hour, relative to the star. Voyager 2 has left the Sun's heliosphere and is traveling through the interstellar medium, a region of outer space beyond the influence of the solar system, joining Voyager 1, which had reached the interstellar medium in 2012. Voyager 2 has begun to provide the first direct measurements of the density and temperature of the interstellar plasma. The two spacecraft Voyager missions were designed to replace original plans for a grand tour of the planets that would have used four highly complex spacecraft to explore the five outer planets during the late 1970s. NASA canceled the plan in January 1972, largely due to anticipated costs, projected at $1 billion, and instead proposed to launch only two spacecraft in 1977 to Jupiter and Saturn. The two spacecraft were designed to explore the two gas giants in more detail than the two Pioneers, Pioneer 10 and 11, that preceded them. In 1974, mission planners proposed a mission in which, if the first Voyager was successful, the second one could be redirected to Uranus and then Neptune using gravity assist maneuvers. Each of the two spacecraft was equipped with a slow-scan color TV camera to take images of the planets and their moons, and each also carried an extensive suite of instruments to record magnetic, atmospheric, lunar, and other data about the planetary systems. The design of the two spacecraft was based on the older Mariners, and they were known as Mariner 11 and Mariner 12 until March 7, 1977, when NASA admitted Administrator James C. Fletcher, 1919-1991, announced that they would be renamed Voyager. Power was provided by three plutonium dioxide radioscope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, mounted at the end of a boom. Voyager 2 began transmitting images of Jupiter on April 24, 1979, for time-lapse movies of atmospheric circulation. Unlike Voyager 1, Voyager 2 made close passes to the Jovian moons on its way into the system, with scientists especially interested in more information from Europa and Io, which necessitated a 10-hour-long volcano watch. During its encounter, it relayed back spectacular photos of the entire Jovian system, including its moons Callisto, Ganymede, Europa, at a range of about 127,830 miles, or 205,720 kilometers, much closer than Voyager 1, Io, and Almathea, all of which had already been surveyed by Voyager 1. Voyager 2's closest encounter to Jupiter was at 2229 UT July 9, 1979, at a range of about 400,785 miles, 645,000 kilometers. It transmitted new data on the planet's clouds, its newly discovered four moons and ring system, as well as 17,000 new pictures. When the earlier pioneers flew by Jupiter, they detected few atmospheric changes from one another to the second, but Voyager 2 detected many significant changes, including a drift in the Great Red Spot, as well as changes in its shape and color. With the combined cameras of the two Voyagers, at least 80% of the surfaces of Ganymede and Callisto were mapped out to a resolution of about 3 miles 5 kilometers, following a course correction two hours after its closest approach to Jupiter. Voyager 2 sped to Saturn, its trajectory determined a large degree by a decision made in January 1981 to try to send the spacecraft to Uranus and Neptune later in the decade. 
Its encounter with the sixth planet began August 22, 1981, two years after leaving the Jovian system, with imaging of the moon Iapetus. Once again, Voyager 2 repeated the photographic mission of its predecessor, and it flew about 14,290 miles, 23,000 kilometers closer to Saturn. The closest encounter to Saturn was at 121 UT, August 26, 1981, at a range of about 63,000 miles, 101,000 kilometers. The spacecraft provided more detailed images of the ring spokes and kinks, and also the F ring and its shepherding moons, all found by Voyager 1. Voyager 2's data suggested that Saturn's A ring was perhaps only about 980 feet, 300 meters thick. As it flew behind and up past Saturn, the probe passed through the plane of Saturn's rings at a speed of 8 miles per second, 13 kilometers per second. For several minutes during this phase, the spacecraft was hit by thousands of micron-sized dust grains that created puff plasma as they were vaporized. Because the vehicle's attitude was repeatedly shifted by the particles, attitude control jets automatically fired many times to stabilize the vehicle. During the encounter, Voyager 2 also photographed the Saturn moons Hyperion, the Hamburger moon, Enceladus, Tethys, and Phoebe, as well as the more recently discovered Helene, Telesto, and Calypso. Although Voyager 2 had fulfilled its primary mission goals with the two planetary encounters, mission planners directed the veteran spacecraft to Uranus, a journey that would take about 4.5 years. The encounter with Jupiter was optimized in part to ensure that future planetary flybys would be possible. The Uranus encounter's geometry was also defined by the possibility of a future encounter with Neptune. Voyager 2 had only 5.5 hours of close study during its flyby. Voyager 2 was, Voyager 2 was the first human-made object to fly past the planet Uranus. Long-range observations of the planet began on November 4, 1985, when signals took approximately 2.5 hours to reach Earth. Light conditions were 400 times less than terrestrial conditions. The closest approach to Uranus took place at 1759 UT, January 24, 1986, at a range of about 50,640 miles, 81,500 kilometers. During its flyby, Voyager 2 discovered 10 new moons, given such names as Puck, Portia, Juliet, Cressidia, Rosalind, Belinda, Desdemona, Cordelia, Ophelia, and Bianca, obvious allusions to Shakespeare. Two new rings in addition to the older nine rings and in a magnetic field tilted at 55 degrees off-axis and off-center. The spacecraft found wind speeds in Uranus's atmosphere as high as 450 miles per hour, 724 kilometers per hour, and found evidence of a boiling ocean of water some 497 miles, 800 kilometers, below the top cloud surface. Its rings were found to be extremely variable in thickness and opacity. Voyager 2 also returned spectacular photos of Miranda, Oberon, Ariel, Umbriel, and Titania, five of Uranus's larger moons, flying by Miranda at a range of only 17,560 miles, 28,260 kilometers. The spacecraft came closest to any object so far in its nearly decade-long travels. Images of the moon showed a strange object whose surface was a mishmash of peculiar features that seemed to have no rhyme or reason. Uranus itself appeared generally featureless. Voyager 2's encounter with Neptune capped a 4.3 billion mile, 7 billion kilometer journey when, on August 25, 1989, at 356 UT, it flew about 2,980 miles, 4,800 kilometers, over the cloud tops of the giant planet. The closest of its four flybys, it was the first human-made object to fly by the planet. Its ten instruments were still in working order at the time. During the encounter, the spacecraft discovered six new moons, Proteus, Larissa, Despina, Galatia, Thalassa, and Naiad, and four new rings. The planet itself was found to be more active than previously believed, with 680 mile, 1,100 kilometer per hour winds. Hydrogen was found to be the most common atmospheric element, although the abundant methane gave the planet its blue appearance. Images revealed details of the three major features in the planetary clouds, the lesser dark spot, the great dark spot, and Scooter. Voyager photographed two-thirds of Neptune's largest moon, Triton, revealing the coldest known planetary body in the solar system, and a nitrogen ice volcano on its surface. Spectacular images of its southern hemisphere showed a strange pitted cantaloupe-type terrain. The flyby of Neptune concluded Voyager 2's planetary encounters, which spanned an amazing 12 years in deep space, virtually accomplishing the originally planned grand tour of the solar system, at least in terms of targets reached, if not in science accomplished. Once past the Neptune system, Voyager 2 followed the course below the ecliptic plane and out of the solar system, approximately 35 million miles, 56 million kilometers, past the encounter. Voyager 2's instruments were put in low-power mode to conserve energy. After the Neptune encounter, NASA formally renamed the entire project the Voyager Interstellar Mission, VIM. Of the four spacecraft sent out beyond the environs of the solar system in the 1970s, three of them, Voyagers 1 and 2 and Pioneer 11, were all heading in the direction of the solar apex, i.e. the apparent direction of the sun's travel in the Milky Way galaxy, and thus would be expected to reach the heliopause earlier than Pioneer 10, which was headed in the direction of the heliospheric tail. On November 1998, 21 years after launch, non-essential instruments were permanently turned off, leaving seven instruments still operating. Through the turn of the century, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, continued to receive ultraviolet and particle fields data. 
For example, on January 12, 2001, an immense shockwave had blasted out of the outer heliosphere on July 14, 2000, finally reached Voyager 2. During its six-month journey, the shockwave had plowed through the solar wind, sweeping up and accelerating charged particles. The spacecraft provided important information on high-energy shock-energized ions. On August 30, 2007, Voyager passed the termination shock and then entered the heliosheath. By November 5, 2017, the spacecraft was 116.167 AU, about 10.8 billion miles, or about 17.378 billion kilometers from Earth, moving at a velocity of 9.6 miles per second, 15.4 kilometers per second, relative to the Sun, heading in the direction of the constellation Telescopium. At this velocity, it would take about 19,390 years to traverse a single light year. On July 8, 2019, Voyager 2 successfully fired up its trajectory correction maneuver thrusters and will be using them to control the pointing of the spacecraft for the foreseeable future. Voyager 2 last used those thrusters during its encounter with Neptune in 1989. The spacecraft's aging attitude control thrusters have been experiencing degradation that required them to fire an increasing and untenable number of pulses to keep the spacecraft's antenna pointed at Earth. Voyager 1 had switched to its trajectory correction maneuver thrusters for the same reason in January 2018. To ensure that both vintage robots continue to return the best scientific data possible from the frontiers of space, mission engineers are implementing a new plan to manage them. The plan will involve making difficult choices, particularly about instruments and thrusters. Voyager 2 remains in contact with Earth through the NASA Deep Space Network. In 2020, maintenance to the Deep Space Network cut outbound contact with the probe for eight months. Contact was re-established on November 2, 2020, when a series of instruments was transmitted, subsequently executed, and relayed back with a successful communication message. On February 12, 2021, full communications with the probe were restored, after a major antenna upgrade that took a year to complete, the DSS-43 communication antenna which is solely responsible for communications with the probe, is located near Canberra, Australia. Future of the probe As the power of the RTG slowly reduces, various items of equipment have been turned off on the spacecraft. The first science equipment turned off on Voyager 2 was the PPS in 1991, which saved 1.21 watts. In 2023, Voyager is expected to pass Pioneer 10 to become the second furthest spacecraft from the Sun at a distance of somewhere near 12 billion miles. Voyager 2 is expected to keep transmitting weak radio messages until at least the mid-2020s, more than 48 years after it was launched. Voyager 2 is not headed toward any particular star, although in roughly 42,000 years, it will pass light years from the star Ross 248, and if undisturbed for 296,000 years, Voyager 2 should pass the star Sirius at a distance of 4.3 light years. Now that you watched the video, let us know what you think about NASA Voyager 2 by leaving a comment in the section below.